Well, hey there, my friend. It's Matt Tommy. Listen, so glad that you are with me on the podcast today. You know, one of my passions in life is helping people to understand that creativity is not just extra. It's not just a part of the kingdom. It's actually how God set the kingdom of God up to work. It's how the kingdom gets manifested in and through our life. It's what I call see and agree. We see with heaven. We understand heaven's perspective. We hear the voice of the Lord. We agree with that and we release it in and through our life. And listen, once you understand that process, whether it's through your art or through business or through family or through relationships or just life in general, that's how heaven's perspective, that's how God's ideas and his dreams come through us into the earth. That's how we connect, I believe, with the abundant life that Jesus designed us to live in. And that's how we see the transformative power of God begin to flow in our life. Well, listen, I love any time I get to share this process with people. I recently did that at my church, New Covenant Church over here in Western North Carolina. And I wanted to bring uh, this message to you so that you understand in one easy to listen to message how this process of prophetic creativity works. All right. Hey, listen, I hope it's a big encouragement to you. Let me know what you think. Leave a review on the podcast uh, or if you're listening right here on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or wherever you might be listening, be sure to leave uh, a comment there as well. And we'll keep this conversation going. All right, my friend, enjoy this message about prophetic creativity. There's a new perspective that God's wanting to release this morning. I woke up this morning and the Lord just said, awaken, awaken, awaken. I'm going to awaken my people today to a new reality, a new reality of the kingdom. You know, it's interesting how I think as you walk with the Lord over the years, the thing that you thought he said evolves. Anybody ever had that experience? I, well, you said this, and I understood it that way, but now I understand it differently now that I know this. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, we're, we're growing. That's how the kingdom works. In 2009, God woke me up out of a dead sleep in the middle of the night, 3.09 in the morning, to a Jason Upton song. Y'all know Jason Upton worship right here? To that song, Lion of Judah. It said, raise up an army, raise up an army like Joel saw. And I was like, what is this? And the second morning I got up, and went down to my studio and, and uh, opened up Joel 3.9 at 3.09 in the morning. And the Lord said, uh, I'm calling you to raise up an army of artists to reveal my glory in the earth. I want you to bring the master artists and the emerging artists together in this movement. And I began to see wells of fire all over the globe. And the Lord began this incredible journey. Um, of course, you know, right after that, I'm sitting alone in my basement at 3.30 in the morning now going, is that you? Is that the pizza I had? I don't know, you know. And, um, but little by little, the Lord began to show me, you know, what to do. So I began to walk and I began to walk. I began to take this idea, this dream that God had put inside of me. And I just began to say, yes, I didn't understand the how I didn't understand the timing. I just began to say yes with what was in my hand right then. And uh, I had me a little YouTube channel. I think I had to start one. I had a keyboard. I had a, little, a few people that would listen to me. And I just began to share. And uh, it's been incredible over the last 10, 11 years now. It spawned this worldwide movement of tens of thousands of artists all over the world waking up to who God's called them to be. And as I look back, I'm just, and as Blake was saying this this morning, I'm just, and thank you for those kind words. I mean, I love this house, and God's brought us here and planted us here, and we're, we're honored to be walking this life out with you. Um, but it's, it's amazing, you know, you don't know the steps that it's going to take to walk uh, the journey that, that you've walked on. Um, and there's no way that I could have ever imagined, you know, what we're, what we're doing now. The interesting thing is, though, the Lord has switched the script because I'm out there doing my art and God birthed an art business through me that became very successful and then uh, books and all this kind of stuff. Da, 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 da. And then about two years ago, the Lord said, I want you to shut down the studio in Asheville and I want you to begin to focus on your mentoring artists full time. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Lord, don't you know how this works? Like I already have the plan. You gave me the plan. He said, yeah, we're changing the plan. And so I began to shift into that and the favor of God in every area. 
began to begin to happen even more than we had experienced. And then the interesting thing was, in the middle of that, the Lord said, surprise, this is not just about art artists. Everybody's an artist. Yeah, well, that's good. And the message that I've been doing in you and showing you for artists is now supposed to go all over the world. And because everybody is called to be, everybody's an artist. Everybody's designed as an artist. You know why? Because your daddy's an artist. Your father's an artist, and you're called as an image bearer of him to reveal and reflect the kingdom. I love this. The Lord just gave me this this morning. I, I'm just, I'm off the rails already. Praise God. Uh, John 1, uh, I do know when lunch is, so we're going to be fine. But um, in John 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and in the, He was... In the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him. Without Him, not anything was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. So you remember on the day of creation, when God said, let there be light? He wasn't just saying, turn the lights on. He was saying, let there be a release of my nature. Then when my nature gets released, things change. So in God, there's both light and life. And we get to, as sons and daughters, be image bearers, that is, reflectors of that light. So that light comes in us, on us, and through us to others, no matter what you're doing. That light doesn't just show up at church. That light just doesn't just show up at Bible study. That light is designed to shine in and on and through you any place that you go. And it's interesting, I love this, it goes on uh, John 1, it says uh, in, in verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And he came as a witness to bear witness about the what? About the light. That all might believe through him. This, this is important. He wasn't the light. It said he was not the light, but he came to bear witness to the light. This ain't about you. <laughs> and this ain't about me. That business that God gave you isn't in your business. That creative idea that God's implanted in your heart that you've been too afraid to step out in, that's not about you. So, so, so you need to quit thwarting it by your fear. The, this is about Him. We're not the light. God has designed us to reflect the light, to reveal the light to the earth. And so... The interesting thing is, as you look at the work of the enemy over the years, the enemy is all about what? Steal people's identity in order to confuse them so they don't know who they are and what God's called them to do. And he's turned the gospel into an, an insurance, a fire insurance card that says, get saved so you don't go to hell and hang on till Jesus comes. But friend, there's so much more because Jesus came through the cross to redeem you in order to restore the kingdom to you. If you miss restoration as a part of the cross, you sit as a Christian living a defeated life on your way to heaven. Whoa. If you, if, you, if you don't understand how the kingdom works, you don't understand restoration, then you sit as a defeated Christian, saved on your way to heaven, but living a defeated life. That is not able to walk in the fullness of what Jesus has restored to you in the kingdom. In fact, if you read Jesus' words, Jesus said, I came to preach the kingdom. <laughs> not going to hell is a wonderful benefit. The only way you get to not go to hell is through the cross of Jesus and him crucified, his blood, and receiving him as your Lord and Savior. But my friend, that's the front door to the kingdom. <laughs> when you begin to walk into the kingdom, you begin to say, "Woo!" all of a sudden, now I can step into who God has really called me to be. Now all those dreams and all those ideas and all that inspiration that I've had for so many years, now it makes sense. Now I start to see the flow of God happen in my life. And so creativity is not just for artsy people. Creativity is not just for women or for men. It's not just for people that call themselves artists. Creativity, that is your ability to see and agree with heaven. 
that is not ancillary or extra to the kingdom. It's literally how the kingdom works. That's how God's designed it. So just like Amy's up here, you know, she's got God downloads an idea to her. She says yes to that. She begins to put that on canvas and it begins to manifest. I've done that with my baskets for years. I've been a songwriter for years. I sing prophetic. I mean, all the things. That's how that process works, right? God speaks to you. You say yes to it. You bring it into, and all of a sudden, whoo, that's the creative process, right? We all get that. All right. How many of you have experienced something like that before in your life? Like, oh, I got an idea. Okay, yeah. We get that. That's how life is supposed to operate normally in every sphere that you walk in, in your family, in your business, in education, in, in wherever it is, in, in government, in justice, in everything that God's called you to. The reason I would almost guarantee that people struggle with finances, the reason that people work dead-end jobs, the reason people can't, nothing ever works out for them, the reason that people are always walking around broke, busting, and disgusted, I love Jesus, but I just can't figure out how it works, is because you're trying to get kingdom results out of physical and fleshly striving. You see the result, you see the promise, but you're going about it the wrong way because you don't understand how to receive the way that God designed it. Really, really huge. All right? And so I love Ephesians 2.10. You know, in Ephesians 2.10 it says this, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that what? That we should walk in them. Now that word workmanship is not just, well, he just got crafty one day, bless his heart, and he just whipped him, whipped you up. No. That word, actually, in the Greek right there is poema. Yeah. There was a Greek scholar in here this morning, Frank. I said, oh, Lord, I'm going to get in trouble. I better get this right. But <laughs> poema, which is the word where we get what? Poem. Poem. Yeah. You're not just any old thing that God just kind of threw on the scene quickly. You are God's poem. And the, the inference in that word, if you, if you read the etymology, is actually art or masterpiece. Right. You are a masterpiece. You are specifically designed. You know the things that you just can't figure out the quirkiness about you that everybody's been trying to shut down your whole life? I guarantee you, ho, oh, I guarantee you, it's just more than likely maybe an immature version of the thing that God's trying to mature in you to bring out so the kingdom can flow through you. Because every gift that God puts in you all right? It doesn't come in finished form. Surprise! Like it, just because God showed you something, just because God said something to you, you know, just because God made me a promise 10 years ago, does not, that, that thing didn't come out in finished form. It's kind of like a diamond in a lump of coal, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's some chipping away that needs to be done. There's some polishing that needs to be done. And when God shows you something, He's giving you both the opportunity and the authority to begin to move in that direction. Does that make sense? Some of you are sitting on prophetic words that God gave you 5, 10, 15, 25 years ago. You're waiting on God to bring it to you in finished format. He's like, I'm just trying to get you to take the first step toward that thing. Because the Bible says what? Man plans his way, but God orders his steps. So God can't be ordering if you're not stepping. <laughs> Some of you need to start stepping. Yeah. You've been sitting on that business idea for years. You've been sitting on that art idea for years. I, I can't tell you how many artists, and again, this has been my life for the last 10 years, but how many business owners and artists and people I talk to over and over and over who said, I've been sitting on this thing for 10, 15, 20 years, but because of fear, because of anxiety. I talked to somebody this morning. They said they're in there, you know, I'm not going to tell them how old they were, but they were old, older than me, and, uh, and I'm 47. They said... Uh, 20 plus, let's just call it 20 plus years ago, they were in a college class majoring in art. And guess what? An art teacher said something to them that the enemy used in their life and it completely shut them down. And until this morning, that thing has been laying dormant. But how many of you know God wants to wake that thing up? Because there's a unique, there's a unique re release of the Spirit of God that can only come through her. And it can only come through you. 
Chip's going to release the kingdom differently than I am. You're going to release the different, differently than, than he is. Why? God can speak the same thing to every person in this room, and yet the expression of that would be completely different on purpose. And it doesn't make God nervous. It makes church people nervous, I'm just going to say. Well, we've never seen nobody do it like that, you know. I ain't never seen a preacher come up and sing first and, and do the altar call before he even started preaching. Well, okay. Help myself. That's right. That's right. It's interesting. I think people in general, all of us, we want rules. God wants the process, right? God tried process in the beginning with Adam and Eve, right? He said, this is my son. This is my daughter. I've created him. He created him in a place with all the authority, all the opportunity, all the provision, all the relationship, all the creative ideas. He even, he even brought them. Think of this. He just created this little mud pie, Adam, bless his heart, before he created the animals. And then he's going to ask Adam what he thinks. I said, I don't know if I'd have known that, Lord. That doesn't make that much sense, does it? But yet God is passionate about the process. Your feeling of unworthiness does not make God nervous. Your feelings of, of not readiness does not make God nervous. He's always been about the process. But we're more comfortable with rules a lot of times. And so we, we lean toward the rules and, and we try to figure things out myself, ourselves. That's the whole story of the Garden of Eden. That God gave them everything they needed. I mean, all the money, the time, the resources, the place, the opportunity, help. I mean, everything. The ability to walk with God and ask Him questions along the way. I mean, before Facebook groups and, and things like what I was doing, God was doing a live Q&A every night. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is great. I love this. And yet they what? They chose to do things their own way. Because of fear. Because the enemy snookered them. That's just what, that's what happened. And what happened in that is that it cut them off from the blessing of God. It cut them off from that voice. It cut them off from the provision. It cut them off from the authority. It cut them off from the resources and relationships that, that God had for them. And so all throughout the Old Testament, God's sending the law, the list, you know, do this, don't do that. God's sending, you know, all of these uh, directions, do this, do that. He's trying to send the prophets. Do, how many of you know, though, that God's not into lists and, and all of these uh, directions anymore? He's into demonstrations. He's into a life. He sent the life of Jesus so that we could see what real relationship and what it really looks like to see and agree with the Father. In fact, Jesus, Jesus said, I just, I just do the things I see the Father doing. I mean, just think, just, if we just left it there <laughs> and you just woke up in the morning and you just said, Lord, I'm going to quit trying to figure this thing out. I'm going to quit trying to strive this thing into being. I just want to know, Lord, what is it you want me to do today in order to get me closer to that thing which you promised me? That's what the essence of the kingdom. Again, see and agree with what God's called you to do. And so the beautiful thing about the cross, and, and again, so many Christians don't understand this. I thank God for this house where this is normal, all right, <laughs> where, we're, where we get this. But the cross did not only become your entrance ticket to heaven, the cross became the restoration of everything that Adam gave up. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. You mean the provision, talking about finances and opportunities and resources and relationships? Yeah. yeah. It did. All of that got restored. What about the authority? What about the ability to think creatively with heaven? What about the ability to enter into a creative process with the Lord? What about the ability to be an image bearer, to have dominion over a circle of influence and release the power of the kingdom in that dominion? All of that got restored. And the beautiful thing is God did it by grace so that none of us can take credit for it. <laughs> You didn't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> and I didn't have anything to do with it. Jesus came and died and restored all of that back to us. But here's the deal. Most Christians sit there begging God the way they pray. Oh, Lord, 
Yeah, I'm just praying you could, if you could just squeeze out one little bit of healing. Oh, Lord, I just need enough money this month to make my bills. Oh, Lord, if you could just bring me one friend. Oh, God, if you could just get me enough, get me into a new job where I could just make $2 more an hour so I could just make it. How many of you know that's not God's best for your life? And so I want you to imagine the storehouse of heaven. The storehouse of heaven. Everything that Adam gave up. All of it Jesus restored. And it's sitting there. Where? It's sitting in the Spirit. It's there in, in 2 Peter 1, 3, and 4. The Bible says that we've already been given what? Everything we need for life and godliness. Well, no Matt, that must mean spiritual things. No, it doesn't. Everything. In fact, you know, when Jesus in Matthew 6, 33 talked about seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these what? Things will be added unto you. It comes in direct uh, context of him talking about provision. Th that is the things that you need naturally to be able to live your life and do the thing that God's called you to do. If you seek the kingdom and his righteousness, all these things, everything that you need, will naturally be added unto you. Not because of what you do, but because of who you are. Your provision, your provision in life comes to you not because you're good enough. It, becomes, it comes to you because you're a son, because you're a daughter. It's God's promise in your life. Now, the way that you steward that determines how it grows. That's a whole different, you know, series, all right? But... Uh, <laughs> This might turn into a series, Jesus. Okay, but uh, but I'm just saying this is this is really, really, really key. So all of this exists in the heavenly realm. So now, remember Ephesians two ten, God created you as this poem so that you could walk in the good things that He had already ordained for you. The whole thing's a setup, y'all. You already win. He's already got the victory on, he's already done it on your behalf. When you're walking down a road in life and you don't realize the next step, God's, listen, God's already set the provision out for you. He's already brought the angel to, to intersect your path. He's already brought the divine relationship. The wealth of the wicked is already laid up for you. If any of you ever have heard about the Appalachian Trail, you know, you can hike from Georgia to Maine. A lot of people do that over five or six months. One of the beautiful things about that is that you can, you can have people mail you uh, the food, new shoes, all this kind of stuff, and it'll be waiting for you at different stops along the trail. How many of you know God's already, been, God's already got a delivery there? He's already sent the Amazon man. Woo! He's already sent him. And so when you're walking down the road, it's not like you're begging the Lord, well, Lord, I just don't know. I hope I can make it. Ah, uh, you're walking with purpose because you're like, around that corner is my provision. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says what? Therefore, when you pray, believe that you have what? Already received it. That you received it. And what? And you'll have it. So you don't pray like you want it. You pray like you already have it. See, gratitude is the gateway to grace. Gratitude opens the door that allows you to receive everything that God's already provided for you. But if you're walking around with this fence around you, I don't know. I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if I can do this. This doesn't make sense. I've never seen anybody else do that. I don't know how this is going to work out. And it stops you. You literally build a fence around the goodness that God is trying to bring in your life. And this, the interesting thing is, again, just the gravity of this, this is not just your story. You're a part of the kingdom story. And so when you do that, and when I do that, and we've all done it, and it's mindset, right? Renewing your mind to the truth. When you operate like that, though, you are stopping God's ability to move in and through you in the areas that he's placed you, all right? And that's what the enemy's up to. That's what the enemy, he's trying to fool you all the time. But God has designed you that everything that you do, the businesses, the interactions, the relationships, the creative ideas, the songs, the books to be written, all of that, that these would be these beautiful intersection points. That when somebody 
inter, you know, engages in the thing that you have done, the business that you've created, the, the relationship, the song that you, that you write, whatever it is, all right? Even in day-to-day -day reactions, they're interacting with the presence of the Lord. The Lord showed me a long time ago uh, that when I create a piece of art, that it's like preparing a table for the Lord to be able to speak to the viewer in a beautiful way. People would come in my gallery all the time in Asheville. It's funny, all the new age people, you know, they come in and they're like, whoa. They're like, the energy in here is like great, you know. <laughs> and of course, you know, I, I didn't go, that's the Holy Ghost, take it, whoo, you know. I, <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm just, I'm just cooperating with the Lord. I'm letting him use the business. I'm letting him use my art. I'm letting him use the conversation. I'm letting him use loving on people in, a, in order to do what? Whew. Be an intersection point where heaven meets earth. That's how the kingdom works. And so it's interesting, I think, you know, when you look at the, at the Bible, you look at the Old Testament especially. The Old Testament is nothing but prototype after prototype, after, you know, Noah and Moses and Jeremiah and David all these people that God's trying to show this picture of, listen, weak, naked, poor, messed up. If you'll just say yes, yes. if you'll just say yes, I can do something really big through you. Yes. And if you'll just keep saying yes, I can really do some incredible things through you. So I want you, uh, I'm going to give you a, a quick, this is actually a process we're going to be taking apart in this series. Um, and it's really just kind of a thing that the Lord showed me over the years. And once I understood it, I was like, oh, that's how things begin to happen. All right. And so I, I want you to, to get this because, again, if you're not experiencing results in your life, if you're not experiencing the life of the kingdom, if you're not walking in divine abundance, if you're not, um, you know, experiencing what I think Jesus called the abundant life, you know, then the issue is not with him. And I don't, that's not a shame thing. Do not receive that as shame. All that is, is like Maya Angelou said, when you know better, you do better. Right? And so what we're doing this morning is just, boop, we're just going to reset a little bit. You're already getting reset this morning. All right. So are you feeling reset? Yeah. Yep. 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 All right. So even the sound man's getting blessed. Praise God. Okay. Or somebody is. Hallelujah. All right. You know, it's good when the sound man gets blessed. So. <laughs> all right. So, number one, um, relationship. All right? So there's seven things. I'm going to give them to you quick. Relationship. Everything in the kingdom comes out of relationship. Jesus said in John 15, what? I'm the vine. You're the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. All right? If you look at Luke 8.10, which is a beautiful scripture where Jesus says, the secrets of the kingdom are your, what? Inheritance. Do you know that there are secrets about every part of society, every part of your life, every part of business, every part of relationship, every part of healthcare, everything. There are secrets that are hidden from, I think, the enemy. You know, they're, they're hidden for the people of God. They're hidden for the people of God. And God's looking for people who will just say yes to him, be in relationship with him, so that as you lay your head on his breast, as you take time with him in worship and listening to his voice, he can whisper, hey, what about starting an army of artists? And I'd be like, cool, this is great. <laughs> what about doing that? What about doing that? And he's looking for people that will just be close enough in relationship with him. So relationship is always the first. All right, because again, if you, if you see a demonstration of the kingdom or you see uh, a demonstration of an idea that you have working in somebody else's life and you try to make that happen on your own, it will always end up less than what God originally intended. And many times you'll end up broke, busted, and disgusted. Ask me how I know. Because... <laughs> Because you end up trying to do things out of your own strength. And I, listen, that's not God trying to teach you a lesson. That's not God trying to be ugly to you. You just don't know how the kingdom works. Oh, yeah. And I'm trying to help to reset that this morning. All right? So relationship with him is huge. All right? Number two, revelation. Revelation always comes out of relationships because God speaks to the ones he loves and speaks to the ones that love him. 
You know, there are, I bet there were things, even in the 12 disciples, you know, there were three that were Jesus' kind of running buddies. I bet they knew things that the other ones didn't know. Why? Because they just hung out with him. They were just closer with him. Now, this is not a spiritual one-upsmanship. I'm just saying relationship is key, and God always speaks to the ones that he loves. And so your imagination is the engine through which God speaks in your life. Well, a lot of people, you know, a lot of, a lot of Christian folk are scared of imagination because the only thing we've ever been taught is vain imaginations, you know? How many of you know that God's the originator of your imagination? <laughs> He's the one that gave you to be able to, ability to be able to see and feel and sense and hear. Why? Because when you see pictures, pictures birth desire. And desire births movement inside of you so that you begin to follow and do things. If you do, That's like a... A fuel, if you will, your engine, you know, this imagination engine, when it comes combined with the Holy Spirit, is like a fuel that keeps you going. Why? Because you want to see that thing that you've been dreaming about. You want to see it happen. And so that that determines your beliefs, your thoughts, your, you know, you're like focused. You know, like when you're in love and you get like crazy, like when I was in love, I am still in love, 24 years <laughs> with Tanya. Our anniversary is Tuesday. Come on, somebody. Speaking of recalibrate, I am, when I first fell in love with Tanya, I would call my mama and talk to her on the phone, and uh, I, was, I was actually dating somebody else. And um, I wasn't that guy. I wasn't that guy. But, um, but my mama said, she said, I knew you were going to marry Tanya because you were the one you, she, always, you, um, she was the one you always talked about. She was up here in my head. I was thinking about her. I was like, ooh. I love when she talks Southern. You know, I love when <laughs> a wiggle when she walks and a wiggle when she no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Hey. Hey. Thank you. No. But hey. But that was a motivating factor. All right. That's why God gives you imagination so that you can, those things that you're seeing that are not yet. Just like God brings things that are not yet as, and brings them into the natural, that's what we do. We see those things that are not as though they were. When we see things, again, remember, we're not begging God. We're thanking Him that the thing that He showed us already exists. Whoa. You mean, God, the, the business idea that you gave me already exists? Mm-hmm. You mean all the people that I need to hire and all the vendors that I need to get and, and all the, you mean all of the building that I need, all of that already, mm -hmm, it already exists. Yes. And it's, it's by faith that we walk across that bridge and we appropriate those things yes. into our life. I love what, uh, what Mark Verkler says. Uh, you know, he teaches about hearing God's voice. He said, the, the voice of God sounds like the spontaneous thoughts that light upon your heart as your eyes are fixed on Jesus. So quit trying to overcomplicate this thing. When you get with Jesus and, and you're, you're saying, Lord, speak to me. I, I'm, I see this vision. What's next? Just hush and write down whatever he says. Now, this isn't a, a how to hear God's voice lesson. I could teach you a lot about that. I mean, does it, you know, agree with God's word? I mean, lot, lots of different things. But in general, God's going to speak to you through your imagination. And here's the beautiful thing. It's going to be in line with the way that he's created you. Yeah, that's good. My calling and design is not your calling and design. Right, yeah. The thing that God's called me, to, I mean, thank God he didn't call me to be an accountant. I am not your guy. <laughs> now, my wife, very gifted in administration and finances and all that kind of stuff. How many of you know that we're a fabulous pair? Because God always brings you into relationship with people so you can walk further, farther, yeah, that's faster. Good. All right? So it's always in line with your design and with your assignment. And it's, uh, so I think, again, that's just a beautiful thing of the way the Lord works. When you're in relationship with him, he speaks something to you. You don't have to be afraid that, well, gosh, this seems too easy. Or this seems too good. Or, dang, I've been trying, I've been pushing this off for 30 years. I, I, hello? <laughs> the reason that thing's on your heart is because God put it there. And if you'll begin to lean into that, I promise you that's where the grace is. Amen. That's where the grace is. Number three, agreement. 
all agreement is, again, it's just a principle in God's word, but agreement opens the door. Agreement uh, gives you the ability to receive that which God has already promised. And so it's just you saying yes to the dream, to the vision, to the opportunity, and it releases provision, it releases resources and relationships and opportunities. All right? So agreement. On the other side, you're stinking thinking, your mindset of, I'm not good enough, I don't understand this, how would this ever work? I don't, da, 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 da. Guess what? That is coming into disagreement with the Word of God. Sometimes we call that an ungodly belief. It's a belief that is ungodly. It doesn't agree with God, right? <laughs> so we want to have godly beliefs. All right, so relationship, revelation, agreement. The next thing is skillful response. There's a beautiful passage of Scripture in Exodus 31 that talks about Bezalel, one of the first healthy artists that we see in God's Word. And it says that he was filled with the Spirit of God and skilled in every manner of workmanship. Yes. So what does that mean? That means you can't just have a dream from the God, you know, from a dream from God and have the Holy Ghost goosebumps, woo, God's coming to the nations, ah, and never do anything about it. Yes. There's a skill set that you're going to have to learn, that you're going to have to grow in, that you're going to have to allow to mature in your life so that you can step into the fullness of what God's called you to. So you can't just go on a dream and a passion, and at the same time, you can't just go on skill. Some of you are excellent technicians at whatever it is that you do, and yet there's no life or momentum in what you're doing. It's because you've, you've pushed away or not, not understood how to uh, involve the Spirit of God in what you're doing. And so now you may be on this incredible path, but there's no power behind it. When you begin to bring together being both filled and skilled, all of a sudden it's like a jet plane. And here's the beautiful thing. No matter where you are on the journey, no matter if you're just starting or if you're way down the road, God can use your life at every place in the journey. So there's not this thing of, well, when I get here, God can use, ah, God starts using you now. Amen. You've been faithful with little, Matthew 25 says. Now I'm going to make you ruler over what? Much. You start out as a one-talent guy. You get then two talents. You get five talents. How many of you want to be? I want to be a 10-talent, 20-talent person. But some of you are trying to be five-talent people with one-talent habits. So the, the promise of God is always followed up by a challenge or an opportunity, if you will, to do something, to respond, all right? To, you know, think of Isaiah when it says, sing for joy, oh barren woman, you know, you who have no children, I'm going to do awesome things in your life. And then what does he say next? Enlarge the place of your tent. That is, if you want to see this thing that I promised you come to pass, you got to get over here and <laughs> enlarge your tent so that I can do something. But I'm, a, I'm, scared to, I'm scared to hire those five new people because I don't know what would happen. But every time I go to pray, God says, hire five, hire five new people. Well, guess what? He's trying to get you to make room for the blessing that he's trying to bring in your business. But I can't afford that new building. You can't afford not to do it. Shoo. Number next, number five, um, incarnation. That's when the dream manifests into reality. All right, so the, again, the thing that we've been agreeing with, God's put in our heart, we're filled and skilled, we're cooperating with the Holy Spirit. Now that thing begins to come into reality. And uh, then number six, transformation. Because when you're cooperating with God and doing the thing that He's given you to do, no matter what it is, He promises to, to move through that. He promises to, to show up. Why? Because we're sons and daughters. We're image bearers. We're the ones that are designed. Remember, just like John the Baptist. We're not the light, but we're called to reveal the light. And I promise you, when God shows up in your business, you'll know the difference. Yeah. When God shows up in your family, you'll know the difference. When God shows up in your artwork or whatever, if you're a doctor, when he shows up, or when he shows up in anything that you're doing, you will know the difference. Why? Because you'll say, whoa, there's so much more happening, and I'm doing so much less. <laughs> I'm not having to make it happen anymore. I'm just having to continue to agree with him. And God can make momentum happen whoa, like you could never see. People, I had so many artists over the years have looked at 
my art career and said, Matt, how did this happen? Like, did you pay somebody off? Like, did you, like, what, what happened? Like, I went from not being known to being recognized by the Smithsonian to then selling my work for thousands and thousands of dollars, commissioned work, and winning something in Europe. I mean, all these things that have, have happened, books going all over the world, all this. There's no way that I'm that good. I'm not that good. I'm not that good. <laughs> but I just kept saying yes. I just kept saying yes. I just kept saying yes. And then last is abundance. When God shows up, and the life and light of God is, is being transmitted through what you do. Uh, God's abundance shows up in your life and in others. And I love, I love the, the scripture in Exodus 36 where Bezalel is working on the tabernacle of Moses. And he gets to the point where he has to call Moses. And he said, Moses, listen, uh, could you please, the Bible says, restrain the people from giving. Have you ever had a call from your bank and they say, oh, Mr. Tommy, we love you. We appreciate your business, but we're going to need to get two other bank accounts because there is way too much money in this other bank account. You're just putting way too much in it. Is there a way that we could expand this? Anybody ever had that call? I'm waiting on that call. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but that's what Exodus 36 says, that as Bezalel was filled and skilled, as he was cooperating with the Holy Spirit, as he was submitted under leadership, whole another issue, as he was beginning to walk in the thing that God called him to, there was overwhelming abundance. You just trying to make it and get by with the very least is not God's best for your life. God's, got, God's a God of overwhelming abundance, of more than enough. And that's what he wants to release in and through you. Again, not just for your benefit. But for others, the beautiful thing is you get to experience the goodness of that flow. You get to live the abundant life through that. So that when people look at your life, they go, whoa, how did you get to walk in this? How did you get to live the dreams? How did you actually begin to see the thing that you thought God was? How do you get to see that show up? And you begin to, to it's not like that song that we sing all the time. What's that song? It's called, uh. Evidence. Oh, I love that song. Y'all love that song? Yeah. All my life you've been faithful. Yeah. <laughs> All my life you've been so good. With every breath that I'm able, God, I will sing of the goodness of God. That's a different song. <laughs> but you know, I, the other one is, I see the evidence <laughs> of your goodness. <laughs> hey, sing both of them. See, whoo, Jesus, sing both of them. You know why I love that song? And I say this again, it's so humbling to stand down here and to worship with you guys every week. And when we sing that, uh, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises and fulfillment all over my life. I'm not just seeing, saying that as a faith thing, although I say it as a faith thing. I'm saying that as a reality in my life. Many of you are saying that as a reality in your life. Many of you are not saying that, seeing that as a reality in your life. And I just want to let you know, Jesus wants to just do a, a shift this morning. All, listen, all you got to do is just say, Father, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that this is how the kingdom works. God, I, I repent. I just, I lay those other things down and I turn the other way. <laughs> and I want to walk toward your kingdom. I want to walk to the fullness. I want to, I want to create with you. I want to see heaven come to earth in and through my life so that I can walk in the abundance of your kingdom and be a conduit of transformation. How many of you want that this morning? That's what we are. Lord, we ask you for that. Father, I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus, God, that every lie of the enemy be destroyed. Father, as people, even in your heart right now, as the Holy Spirit brings up things, uh, maybe mindsets, ideas, fears, things like that. He's doing that right now all over the room. Just begin to just say, Jesus, I just laid that at your feet. I come out of agreement with that. That's not truth. God, I believe your truth. Just begin to give that to him and then begin to listen to his voice. Just ask him, say, Jesus, what do you say about this? What do you say about this idea I've been sitting on for 30 years? What do you say about that? that wounding that happened to me 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 
that word that somebody spoke to me that hit my heart like a knife and I've been paralyzed ever since. Lord, what is it that you say about that? Father, I thank you that grace, your grace, is here, Lord, to do the work that it needs to do. Lord, to recalibrate and to reset your people so that we can walk in the fullness of that which you designed for us. Grace, grace, <laughs> God's grace, grace that can pardon and cleanse within. Oh, grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all my sin. There's nothing that you have done to disqualify you from the goodness of God. Sir, there's nothing that you have done that disqualifies you from the goodness of God. Some of you need to lay that down this morning. You've been saying, I'm not worthy. Yeah, I hear all this, man, but you don't know what I've done. You are not disqualified. You're qualified in the beloved. In the beloved. Whatever that is holding you back from him this morning, just release that to him. Say, Lord, I don't want that anymore. I don't want to hold that. I don't want to nurture that thing in my life anymore. Lord, I give it to you so that I can receive every good thing that you have for me. Lord, we want to be kingdom people. We want to be sons and daughters, God. We want people to, when they look at New Covenant, God, we want them to say, oh my goodness, those people over there are nuts. They are crazy. They are doing things. They are starting businesses. They're seeing people healed. They're seeing families restored. They're seeing drug addicts come up. They, they, they'll love anybody over there. Shoo. Oh God, let that be our testimony. Let that be our testimony.